night at nine. He is one of the most outspoken critics of police use of force here in the Valley. But he gets some on-the-job training about use of force this tonight. Very interesting stuff. Reverend Jarrett Maupin led protests and marches after Phoenix police shot and killed an unarmed man. Well, tonight he gets a chance to experience the split-second decisions that police have to make when encountering a suspect. And our Troy Hayden was right along with him tonight getting the training as well. This must have been eye-opening. It was. It was a really interesting experience. You know, we've all watched those protests all over the country after police officers were accused of shooting people who aren't armed. But what would happen if one of those protesters felt what it was like to wear a badge and then be put in a life or death situation himself? So I'm going to have you put your whole, put the holster on right inside your, your belt loop there. Jarrett Maupin gets his weapon. You might recognize him as a high profile organizer in the minority community. Just last month, he led marches on Phoenix police headquarters after an officer shot an unarmed man. We want his badge. We want his gun. We want his job. Today, he accepted an invitation to look at things from the other side, agreeing to go through a force on force training session with the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. Three scenarios where you have to decide to shoot or not shoot. Scenario one what, what is a call about a man casing cars in a parking lot. Uh, Moppin right approaches the man and starts asking questions. Look. Uh, you you're your you're looking for your vehicle. What kind of car do you drive? Where you have your hand in your gun? What, what kind of car do you drive? This is my car, man. Oh. Moppin, the officer, is shot. It happens that fast. At what time did you think that it was time for you to address the use of force that was uh, given? When he came to the back of the vehicle. Okay. Uh, and and was hiding. You know, I could sense something something was wrong. Scenario two, a call of two men fighting. What's going on today, gentlemen? What's wrong with you? What's going on today, gentlemen? What do you want? What's happening here? What's wrong with Back you? Back up. Huh? What are you doing, man? Hey. Hey, he shouldn't approach me. He shouldn't approach me. He shouldn't approach me. He shouldn't approach me. What's in there? Yeah. What are you doing? You just shot him? Oh. Hey, he rushed me. Tell me why you shot. Well, I, I've shot because he was within that zone. You know, I felt there was a, an imminent threat. I, I didn't necessarily see him armed, uh, but he, he came clearly to do some harm to, uh, to the officer, to my person. It's hard to make that call. It's a, it shakes you up. Again, an unarmed man was shot. Scenario three, a call about a possible burglar walking down the street. Moppin gets him on the ground. He's not complying. I need you to keep your hands up, sir. For what? Because I need to check that waistband. Well, what? What are you doing? Because I don't know hey, what you have under there. Everybody, look at this guy. What are you doing? No shots fired. Huh? But the suspect did have a hidden knife in his waistband. I went through the scenarios, too, without seeing what Moppin did. So, uh, do you have keys, or uh, do you have anything to show me that? Yeah, don't worry about no, it. No, I need to talk to you. Come on, come on out over here. Well, I'm dead. Maricopa County Sheriffs, get on the ground. Get on the ground. Both of you, get on the ground. Get on the ground. For what? Get back. Get back. Same results for both of us. Things happen very fast out here. I asked Maupin what his biggest takeaway from this exercise will be. I didn't understand how important uh, compliance was, but but after going through this, yeah, my attitude has, has changed. Uh, it, this is all unfolding in, in 10 to 15 seconds. Um, people need to comply with the, with the uh, orders of law enforcement officers for their own sake. Thanks to the Maricopa wow. County Sheriff's Office for uh, taking us through that today. That, it was an eye-opener. That's a Scary. tremendous uh, admission that, that Reverend Maupin just made. Right. That you need to comply for your own safety. Right, and he saw it. I mean, he plainly shot a man who was not armed but was coming at him, and yeah. he felt, you know, that he was unsafe at that point, that he was coming after him, and, and he fired. Yeah, and I don't think any officer goes into work thinking, I'm going to shoot and kill somebody today. But no. these interesting, you know, things happen, like the guy coming from behind the SUV, Boom, and you're done. You, you are. How, six how, shots did you, got how did you feel about about those scenarios when you were going through them? How it, did, did it change your perspective? Yeah, it just it, I, I've been through one of these before about four or five years ago, but it just reinforced how fast things happen. And you think at the time, oh, I can think through this and I can figure this all out. Do no, it's just, boom, it's just there. Yeah. It's that fast. I have a lot of respect for Maupin for going through that. Yeah, I agree. I do too. And agreeing to go through that and, and seeing it from the other side as right. well. Do you think it changes the way he? approaches these issues going forward. He says he's going to go out into the community and say what he said at the very end there. You have to comply with what police officers tell you. Let everything sort out at the end, but just do what they tell you right then and sort things out afterwards. Interesting. Right. Interesting. All right, yeah. thanks, Troy. Good stuff, good Troy. Stuff. Thank yeah. you.